guess I want to move on to another class that you teach through the RC music program, the human voice as an acoustical instrument. Can you go into that class and kind of what you explore, what you do, and what do students go through in taking this class with you? So the human voice class is a group voice class. Um, usually there are about 15, 14 or 15 students. Um, and I meet the students where they are as vocalists. Um, <clears throat> some have never sung before. Um, some have been singing for a long time. Um, some have been singing only pop music or they just sing in the shower, but they love it and they do it all the time. Others are choral singers um, and their interests and goals are all different, right? Because everybody's different. Um, so uh, we talk about um, the fundamentals of healthy singing. Uh, we talk about breath, posture, resonance, and vowels, which I address as like the pillars of healthy singing, like these are the technical pillars. Um, so those are the things that we're going to come back to over and over again, and those, the, honing how we address those things and, and how you use your breath to motivate the tone, um, how you use resonance to um, amplify the tone, all of those good things, how you tune your vowels so you don't sound um, totally crazy pants. Um, <clears throat> those are all really important. Um, and my goal as a voice teacher is to make sure that everyone is singing with healthy technique. Um, there's also the element of performance. Um, so uh, you, because you're in a group with 14 or 15 other people, you're performing. Um, and so you, for some people, the class is a really useful instrument um, to become better at performing or just to face their fear of performance. Um, that's huge. That's really important. Um, we look, we, we have three um, repertoire sections, right? We start with classical music for a couple of reasons and not like super hard, like giant Puccini arias or anything like that. We start with manageable classical music um, because that repertoire asks the most healthy technique of the singer. And also because singing in a different language um, sort of uh, distances you from, distances sound from meaning, which you then have to bridge in order to perform and be convincing. But distancing the sound from the meaning allows you to look at and think about those sounds as pure sounds, which we need to do as singers. Um, so it's very helpful. Um, so we do a unit in classical repertoire. Then we look at the American songbook, which is kind of the first half of the 20th century jazz and popular music. Um, and uh, recently I've been focusing exclusively on Duke Ellington and Billy Strayhorn, his partner. Um, and uh, Duke Ellington is hugely important to jazz. He was a Harlem Renaissance figure and like a towering figure in music, in American composition, so important. But for some reason, um, among singers, he's just not one of our big names. He's not a Gershwin or Cole Porter or something. Like we sing other people from the American songbook um, and jazzers who are instrumentalists tend to play more Duke Ellington than we sing Duke Ellington. Then we can look at the Harlem Renaissance and um, and think about again those issues that we talk about that I talk about in um, my freshman year seminar of the exploitation and marginalization of Black artists. But in this case, we're talking about an artist who um, very notably really owns his brand um, and is in charge of his career. And then we can also talk about Billy Strayhorn, really his right hand man and partner in so many ways um, as this uh, queer man a queer black man in the Harlem Renaissance um, whose work um, supporting Duke Ellington, but also on his own. Um, we don't uh, get like, he's not a, a household name or like a familiar name like Duke Ellington is, but he really should be. He's the one who wrote um, take the A train for instance. And his work was as important as Duke Ellington's work in the, in the work that we now think of as Duke Ellington. Um, so we talk about him as well and sing a ton of music that we love, um, that students come to love. And then the last uh, unit is popular music. Um, and with uh, guidance from me and a kind of kibitzing um, from me, students um, get to sing songs that they're interested in from, um, from the popular music world. Um, and uh, all of this is done 
in an atmosphere of warmth and support. So from the very beginning, either the first or the second day, um, we together as a class, we brainstorm what it means to create an atmosphere of warmth and support. Singing is a very vulnerable process, even when you're just singing. But when you're getting coached on singing and critiqued in your singing and your voice is your aural expression of who you are, like your face is the visual expression of who you are, right? Your voice is unique to you and you can't trade it in. It is who you are sonically. Um, to get criticism or feedback about that can be searingly intimate. Um, and so the, in, the atmosphere of warmth and support is crucial to the project, right? I want the class to have all the benefits of a private lesson, the feeling of freedom to explore um, and the intimacy um, between the student and the giver of feedback um, to, to really get at the issues. But at the same time, the benefits of having a team to like support you, right? Um, because when you're just one-on-one, -on -one, you don't have your team, but here we have a team. And so I want only the good things that come from having a group class and establishing an atmosphere of warmth and support is crucial to that. Um, and honestly, um, doing that enabled moving into our lockdown kind of Zoom classes um, to work so beautifully because we already had that connection. Um, we already felt connected. And, and by doing that in the beginning of the Zoom classes, and I expanded that to every class once, uh, to every class I teach once we were starting in lockdown, um, that allows a kind of community to grow that is crucial to staying connected and to learning, I think. So that's what we do in that class. So you are teaching a new class uh, and it is called From Showboat to Hamilton. Can you explore, maybe give us a bit of a teaser what this class is gonna be about? You know, um, what are you gonna be talking about? What are you gonna be doing with this class? And what are some of your goals uh, in terms of educating your students? Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited about this class. Um, so, this is a musical theater class. It looks at, so it's part of the theater department or the drama department rather. Um, and, um, and it's a course that looks at musical theater through the lens of race and gender. So the complete title is From Showboat to Hamilton, Marginalized Roles in American Musical Theater. And really it asks the question, whose story is being told? It turns out that when you ask that question, you see a lot in uh, in the the whole genre of American musical theater. You see more into these shows um, than you generally get on the surface. Um, so when you ask this question, whose story is being told? Lots of cool stuff comes up. Um, we're gonna look at six shows in depth. Um, we're looking at Showboat, which is the first integrated, it's considered kind of the first integrated musical in terms of um, songs and plot, not black and white. Although the relationship of black performers and white performers and having them both in a show at, together, that is also noteworthy. Showboat is wildly problematic and really fascinating. Um, so we start with that. We talk about, so we talk about blackface. There's blackface there. Um, and we talk about uh, The King and I, West Side Story, we're also talking a lot about race and how it's depicted and performers. And again, we're talking about yellow face and brown face and things like that. And we're talking about casting um, underneath it all. And then we are also talking about gender. We're going to look at company, um, which is all about relationships. That's Sondheim, 1970. Um, and uh, notably, company on Broadway is there's a revival of company that gender swaps a bunch of characters, including the main character. Um, and there are all kinds of wonderful implications that come from that. We're also looking at Fun Home, um, which is based on the Al uh, Alison Bechdel um, book, Fun Home. And um, it's spectacular and is the first musical to have a lesbian protagonist. Um, and then we come to Hamilton. Ha Hamilton is a show that 
has changed a lot about Broadway. Um, and we're going to look at that. Um, we're going to reckon with why historians get kind of are less excited about the show um, and say, OK, OK, yeah, it's great. But there are issues. Um, we're going to look at that. So that's what we'll do in the classes. And we will get these things on their feet. So we'll be doing performances. We'll be wrestling with the material by actually doing it. Um, students will also render their, uh, they'll show their uh, growth and thinking in, they'll write a paper, they'll create a directorial vision of a show um, that addresses the problems, these systemic problems um, in musical theater of like of race and gender. Um, and, uh, they'll also do a performance project where they like literally redo a section of a show, um, in a way that plays to their strengths. Um, but that really like deals with the issue, um, uh, the, whatever issue they find. Um, anyway, I'm very excited about it. Um, uh, I encourage people who are in the drama department to take it and outside of it who just like love musical theater. I think we're going to have a blast. So, yeah, you know, I guess my final question to you then is, do you have any projects currently going on? Uh, do you have anything exciting that we should be on the lookout for? Anything that you'd like to tell us about? I, at the beginning of the lockdown, I wrote a piece. I am, I consider myself a kind of functional composer. Um, I write music that needs to be written for things, um, but I'm not, I don't, I, I don't consider myself a composer in the way that like composition professors here or like big name composers are composers. However, I wrote a piece that I'm really excited about um, <clears throat> called Ritual for the Pandemic Anchoress. And uh, it has to do with uh, the long human history of self-isolation and guidance for how to be isolated, um, how to live and maintain your sanity in isolation. Um, it is a choral piece um, that is for an unlimited number of individual voices. Um, and there is a possibility that uh, it will get performed at the RC this fall. And I need singers, treble voices. So uh, any voice that is able to sing uh, up in kind of an upper register is welcome. Um, as long as you can match pitch, we're good. And I will be rehearsing it. And uh, as long as, the, I mean, so we're in talks to make that happen. I'm very excited. Um, and it will be, I think, performed. I'm, I'm thinking about ways to do it. I envisioned it originally as something that existed only uh, virtually because that's how we were performing. Um, but the idea of doing it live is going to be very cool. Texts from uh, medieval um, medieval kind of English texts, some of the earliest writing um, that was published by women, um, up to uh, writings by like astronauts um, who talk about like how they dealt with their isolation. Um, it's really cool and I like it a lot. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I'm excited to do that if it happens. Um, but, uh, and I'm really excited to get back to, getting back to singing in person. Primarily, I am a performing vocalist um, in my own, you know, outside of my teaching. That's what I do. And I haven't performed live for people since early 2020. And I miss it enough that I could start crying talking about it. Um, it is deeply painful to be away from the thing that animates you, you know. So, uh, and I'm really looking forward to doing that, but I don't actually have any gigs on the books, but that'll happen soon. And I can't wait to learn something new. All right, so Jennifer, this has been a lovely interview. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, yeah, thank you. Oh, I loved it too. Thank you so much for talking to me about these things.